Sure glad to be back again tonight. I was just talking to the wife recently, and I told her, I said, you should have been down, honey. Uh, she has to take care of the children, of course, and they're in school, the little fellows. And I told her, I said, you get to meet some of the finest people in the world right here in Texas, Louisiana, and these southerners here. Wish I could go home with each one of you. <laughs> I'm sure I would have some... Grits for breakfast. How many grits? That's good. That's living. Black-eyed peas and turnip greens, cornbread. Nothing any better, I know of. That's good. The love of God does strange things for us, doesn't it? How it constrains our hearts and binds us together like nothing else will do. The love of God. Tomorrow night is our closing of this campaign, and I've got to meet many of the brethren and seeing them and I just this is one campaign that I certainly hate to see closed it's just they've been so nice everybody's so nice and my mother was from pa uh, Paris, Texas I guess I'm just a little bit of Texas so <laughs> so I certainly think you got a wonderful country and what makes any country is the people it's in it. fine Louisiana, Georgia, and Alabama, and all these southern states that talk about southern hospitality. That's true. And tonight, we are planning now, I've asked Brother Moore to speak a little for me, and dime, so I won't have to preach. And just last night, we had a little drama, a little story. Maybe we could have another one of those little ones tonight, just before I pray for the sick. And then... Tomorrow night, I trust maybe if it be the will of the Lord, I'd like to speak to you again, maybe on a text a sermon at the closing service. We sure appreciate all that you've done. You've been so really so nice. And I'm glad that the love of God makes us reach out, way out, yeah. to see it, things that we never seen before. And sometimes meetings like this has a special influence upon the people to influence them to 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 get the vision of what God means. I think it it helps people. Uh, now tonight, uh, before we open the scripture, I want to say that I want to wait till I start to pray for the sick before I pray over these little handkerchiefs and aprons and so forth or whatever they might be. And now, if you miss putting one up here. I wish you'd say and get one anyhow. They're free. We charge for nothing. Even our books, somebody else prints them, and most of that we buy at 40% off that we might bring them, and you don't, of course, they don't make nothing on them books because of the loss that we have on them and the damage, and I've always told the boys if somebody come by and they didn't have the money to get it and want to give it to them, see, just let them have it anyhow. But those books are printed, one of them by Julius Statscliffe, two or three of them, and by Brother Lindsay and so forth. And we buy them with, uh, I think it's 40% off, I think that's what it is. And however, the boys takes care of that. We have no program of money. Money's not even in it at all. The minister called me the other day and said, now what's your financial program? How much money do we have to have? I said, nothing. And he said, well, what do you do for a living? I said, well... Usually at the end of the service, they give a love offering. I said, if they, people feel like doing it, if they don't, why, that's perfectly all right to it. If they don't make the expenses, put that in on the expenses, and let's make it up. If they don't make that, then we'll send home and let my church stand for it. We want to always carry that name of never, I would not permit one of my men to ever, ever beg or bum for money. When it gets that place, it's time for me to come off the field. Man. Yeah. God will liberally provide everything we have need of. It's time to leave. I think many a meeting is ruined by all that. Who will give a ten? Who will give a five? I don't like that. There's only one thing that I like to hear about. That, that it, did I say something wrong? I, uh, I that. I hope I didn't say nothing wrong. I was just expressing my heart this way I felt. <laughs> but I believe.
you there's only one thing I want you to give. Give your heart to Christ. That's all I require. Just give your heart to Christ. That's what we're here for. And so I'm sure that God will take care of the rest if you'll just do that. And now, before we approach the Word tonight, uh, let's pray as we bow our heads. Who would like to be remembered in prayer just tonight? Say, remember me, Lord, I, I'm needy. Remember my request, Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we come approaching thy throne of mercy. We would not come approaching justice because we could not stand it. We could not approach your law because it has no redemption. But we approach Jesus, who is thy mercy. And we come asking for divine mercy upon us all. Forgive us of our shortcomings and our mistakes and the things that we have did or said or even thought. That was wrong. And we do not believe that we are holy, Lord. We believe it's not a holy mountain, but a holy God on the mountain. Not a holy church, but the Holy Ghost in the church. Not a holy people, the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we pray now that the Holy Spirit will deal with us kindly tonight as we are dealing with the sick and the afflicted. Lord, they are tenderly and they're sick and they're needy and we don't know how to what to do Lord I'm standing here between two opinions at this time just how to approach a little subject here wondering if you would bless it to the hearts of the people may I be able to say something that would encourage faith and stir up the gift that's within the people that they might receive their healing tonight Above all things, Lord, that sin-sick soul sitting here, wherever it is, I pray, God, that they'll see the light of day breaking through and will come and be reconciled through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. Granted, I pray for this fine bunch of Calvary-bought servants of yours here behind me, Lord. I feel very little to stand out here on the platform ahead of those men. And some of them is preaching the gospel, and I was just a sinner boy. God, I pray that you'll bless them gallant hearts. May they cling together, Lord, by the love of God wrapped around them in such a way, Father, that they'll, they'll prosper in whatever they do. May they be gallant servants to bring Christ to the people in this closing hour of the world's history. Heal all the sick and afflicted, both soul and body, Father, we pray. Bless us together as we lay upon thy word now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Over in the book of St. Luke's Gospel, uh, the 18th chapter and uh, 38th verse. And he cried, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And in the 42nd verse, Jesus said, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. Amen. Amen. Our little story starts tonight, and it was on a cool spring morning, just at the east side of the gate of Jericho, where the road comes down from Jerusalem. It had been a bad night on the poor fella. He wasn't able to sleep at all. He just tossed about and wake up and toss about those horrible nights. We know what they are, most all of us. Suffers with nervousness and see Mike like had been a terrible night. He, when he got up and he was late getting over to his post to where he done his daily work by begging. There was many beggars in the city. <clears throat> Around the country in them days, very poor country and poor people, under bondage of the Roman Empire, and the beggars would have to get to the street pretty early, and each one had a place where he stayed. It was lotted to him. And they would stand there, and when the merchants had come down the street, they would cry out for alms. And the merchant, perhaps, the first beggar he met, and give him a... Uh, piece of money, why, 
that probably eated it for the day because he couldn't afford to give too much because maybe he couldn't afford it each day giving a coin. A Roman denarius or something might have been a whole lot to him. So he uh, placed in his coin and then he went on. And maybe the next fellow got a coin from somebody else. But they must be there early when the merchants came into their places, the business and the markets. There's many places the beggars couldn't stand, so they would, the soldiers would lot them a place and they had to stand there. And our uh, friend tonight, as we know him as Barnimaeus, some of pronounce it Bartimaeus, while we find him late at his post of duty, and his place was just out on the north side of the gate, where he stood at the gate to catch the merchants as they come in. And looked like he had a pretty good place, and he had been blind since he was a little fellow. And that night, the reason he was late that morning, we'll say in the make of the drama, that he had dreamed all night that he could see again. He had thought that he could once more see the skies and the stars and the sunlight. But now he lived in a world to himself, all shut in in darkness, blind. I think it's one of the most horrible things as a blind person. And I feel sorry when I see a man or woman on the street with that white cane pecking along. Many times have I stopped my car and run over and see some poor old mother about to go into a post or something down along the street and help her across. Some young fella or old man, blindness. I think it's the most pitiful thing. But I, there's, there's a blindness that's worse than physical blindness. That's spiritual blindness. I feel more sorry for them than I do for the physical blind. So why wouldn't our hearts reach out for them instead of condemning them? <laughs> Let's love them. Then they'll see light if you'll just love them. The world's are dying not for a better economics. The church is dying not for a better buildings, a bigger denomination, but it's dying for somebody to reach out a hand of love Amen. to show that we care one for the other. And that's the very sign that Jesus told us that by this all man would know that you were my disciples Amen. when we got love one for the other. Amen. I was thinking of blind, uh, it's a little off my subject, but not off either. There was blind Fanny Crosby. She could see better than a lot of people's got two good eyes. They tried to get her one time to write music or poetry for a, a dance world and for the entertainment world. And she refused to do it, so they were making fun of her. I thought, what a difference it is between her and a certain young Pentecostal boy who set the world afire with rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. I've often thought that he's worse than Judas. Right. Mm -hmm. Judas, Esau sold his birthrights. And what a horrible thing that young man will have to answer for at the day of the judgment. Right. Right. Sent more souls to hell than all the bootleg joints there is in the country. That's right. right. And then when Fanny Crosby... One day when they'd come to her with these big bargains, she was poor too. And they'd come to her and said, we'll give so much if you'll just give your talent over to uh, making songs for the entertainment world. She flatly refused it. She would not do it. She said, if there's anything that I have, belongs to Christ. And so they, the man who were talking to her said, then I suppose that you're expecting to go to a world where there is uh, uh, everlasting life and so forth. He said, yes. So what do you expect this Christ to be? He said, you'll be a man. He said, then if you're the same over there as you are here, said, 
you've never seen, that you're blind. She said, oh, I'll know him anyhow. So they said, how would you ever know him if you are still blind over there as you never had sight in this life? And on the other side, if you had no sight there, how would you know him then? She said, I'll know him. And they laughed at her, and she turned and started through the house. When she had made her decision, no, sir, nothing of the world. All my talent is given to Christ. And they said, she started back across the house and raised up her hand. She said, I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the prints of the nails in his hand. It's those great crucial moments that the, the strain is put upon us that God moves in when we make the decision for him. That's between life and death, that little sharp edge. Sometime at the last moment, when you think you're not going to be well and somebody's making fun of you, still hold your testimony. It's that time that God moves in. Bonnie May has arrived on the scene kind of late. So it was an early spring morning, I believe, along April, because it's near Easter. And his clothes was all ragged, I suppose. He got up to the gate. It was quite so I, He said, well, I'm a little late because I overslept, but the sun in the Palestinian skies was just perhaps rising in the east, and him coming on the north side showed a little And the old wall was shut down by God when Joshua came in. Let's think he got him a rock and sat down in the sunshine and said, well, maybe there's one merchant a little late. I'll get a coin maybe today for my family, because we're really in need. And he got to thinking about, while he's sitting there in the warm sunshine, his ragged coat wrapped around him, he began to think about his dream, how real it was. Then his mind floated back in a daydream like, I know we all have those experiences. Many times I like to climb so high in the mountain until... I'm out of hearing distance from any anything. Just set up there only with the the animals and dream, oh, just dream of God and the coming of the Lord and look out and hear Him scream in the birds and watch Him in the eagles and see Him in the sunrise and the sunset. He's just all around you. Be alone and dream so. Barney Mayus perhaps is setting out there in a dream like that. And then it was spring. He said, oh, I dreamed last night that I had my sight. I can remember when I was a little boy. We lived just around the mountain here. A little cabin around the side there. And I remember when I used to be in this early spring when the little buttercups had come up. How I used to run out as a little boy and play and mother would... Let me pick her a little bouquet of flowers and how I would look laid out there on the soft beds of the grass and look up and see the white clouds passing over in April. The warm sunshine bathing down upon me. How pretty this world must be. But I've long lost sight of it for many years of blindness. So I guess it'll never be, but oh, how I appreciate that dream last night to even dream that I could see. Then he began to think. His mind got caught. Oh, that's when you get into the spirit of anything. Got caught back to when he was a little boy. I know all of us do that. I do go back to the time when I was a little boy. See my father come in with a little short fella, a logger, and how he had strong arms. And I'd see me, he didn't weigh about 140 pounds, but... A fellow told me the other day he seen him load a 950-pound log by himself on a wagon. And I see him when he'd roll his sleeves up, an old apple tree there and a little piece of looking glass mom tacked up on it and a little pitcher pump. She had a meal sack there for a towel. I'd see Pop pump the water and, and uh, I'd take soap and wash his hands, that old lye soap we used to make, you know, and make the lye and make the soap out of it. 
and wash. When I see him pull his arms up like that to comb his shaggy black hair, I said, you know, my daddy will never die. He's too strong to die. But he died at 52 years old. Then I think of Hebrews 13. Here we have no continuing city, but we're seeking one to come. We have no abiding place here. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. Now, Barney may have thinking when he was a little boy, and I can imagine him thinking this. Oh, I remember when a long lunchtime I'd hear that sweet voice of that beautiful mother of mine around the hillside, Barney Mayus, your dinner, son. And how I'd run to the house and she'd wash my little face and brush my hair back and kiss me on the cheeks and I'd see her big soft eyes and I'd look up in the face of that pretty mother and, and she'd set me down to lunch and then after lunch, in a little while, she'd call me again because it was nappy time. And she'd sit out on the porch as we looked off over the garden and she'd rock me in her arms and I'd pop my little baby hands on her pretty cheeks and she'd kiss me and, and she'd tell me Bible stories. And how I love to hear them stories of how the great Jehovah God brought our people over into this promised land. And she'd look over the little buttercups that I brought her in, the little flowers from off the hillside. And she'd say, that's some of Jehovah's promise too, Barney Mayus. This beautiful land is ours. And Jehovah led us up in the great sand dunes of Egypt and put us in this land. How she'd tell me of that great mighty Jehovah, how he thundered out for his people, stood in a breach, drowned the Pharaoh's army behind him, High rain bread out of the heaven, brought quails in from the, the fields, fed our people, and how he performed signs, wonders when they were thirsty. Yeah. The great prophet Moses smote a rock, and out come water. Oh, how great Jehovah was. Yes. What a great, powerful God that we serve. How that great Jehovah had promised that prophet Moses Someday the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like unto me. And he'll take us out from home under this Roman dictatorship. And then you remember when they crossed the Jordan just a little bit below where their cabin was and how that Jehovah rolled back the sea, the Jordan, in the month of April when the hills of snow was melting up in Judea up around the mountain, Hermon and so forth, and this icy snow water was gushing through and muddy, twisting. The great, mighty Joshua marched down to the sea, and he spoke, and Jehovah moved back on powder dry land and walked him across it right in the month of April. Oh, how that great God, then Barnabas looked over a little bit, kind of shivered and said, you know, I wish that Jehovah was still Jehovah. Somehow I believe he is, but my priest tells me that all those things are past. He isn't like all at once to hear something coming. Click, 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 click. It's a little donkey. Well, that must be a rich man because transportation then is usually by the poor went by foot, the rich went by cart drawn by donkey or either rode on the back of a donkey. So he rises runs out about 20 feet to the big cobblestone road and run out and said, Alms for the blind. Alms for the blind. All at once the little donkey stopped and he heard a cruel voice saying, Out of my way, beggar. I am the servant of the Lord. I'm on my way to Jericho this morning. I'm going to meet the ministerial association. Now, I'm going to see if there's no healing services around here. None of that fanaticism. Any so-called Galilean prophet ain't coming around here. None of this fanaticism. Out of my way, beggar. I must be on my way. I'm on the Lord's service. Pardon me, Holy One. Back, back. On into Jericho he goes. The whole, uh, get the ministerial association to stop all campaigns of such. 
<laughs> Maybe that's a little rude. Maybe I ought to have said that. By the way, you know, the man dies, but the spirit doesn't. So it's too bad, but that's where it's supposed to be. For every generation rising in the judgment will have to stand the same thing. You see, you've got to go through the same exactly thing. Then as Barnabas made his way back, he's getting up in the day. Let's sink a little piece in. The sun now coming across had shattered the rock. So he felt around till he found him another one. Sat down, he thought, well, I guess I won't take nothing in tonight. I guess we'll just have to do without. And he just sat down and thought, well, I was having such a wonderful dream about uh, days gone by and about great Jehovah. Then he picked up his thought again and said, yes, I remember Mother telling me one of my favorite uh, stories. And one of my favorite stories was this. She used to tell me of the prophet Elijah. I like that one so well. Because she'd say, Barnabas, you like the story about Elijah the Tishbite with the Shunammite woman? Yes, Mama, because it's about a little boy. And how God worked his plan by a little boy. And he loved that because he believed in Jehovah too. And this Shunammite woman, being a Gentile, yet God showed her favor. How the great mighty prophet Elijah come to the city and she perceived that he was a holy man. And he lived in a cave up in the mountain. And he had his servant with him, Gehazi, who was kind of a, like a campaign manager that went around and helped him get things ready when he would speak. And somehow or another, she liked this man. She thought he was a wonderful person, so her husband was kind of an elderly man, and she was growing old. And she said to her husband, I pray thee, let's show favor to this man, because I perceive that he is a holy man. And they built a little chamber on the side of their house, a little prophet's chamber. Put him a little bed there, and, a, and also put him a, a, a little jug of water and a little stool to sit on, a little... Uh, Hand to wash his tired, weary feet and limbs when he sat down. I had no doubt the servant were bringing out something to eat when she heard him out there in the chamber. And Elijah was so well pleased with this till <coughs> I hear her say, Barney Mayus, you know what that woman need worst of all when he asked? He said, What favor could I do for you? Could I speak to the king or could something I do? She said, No, I dwell with my people. There's nothing I have need of. I just done it out of the my heart because I respect the God that you serve. I respect the life that you live. And then Gehazi said she's old, her husband's old, and they had no children. Barney may have liked this. And the great prophet Elijah said, go tell her to stand here at the door. He saw a vision. He said, thus saith the Lord, you will embrace a son. And when this little boy became about the age of 12 years old, oh, how his papa and mama loved him. That must have been about the age of little Barney Mays. And how the papa and mama loved him. How the papa take him out in the fields and showed him all the way to raise grain. One day when he was out in the field, he must got a sunstroke because he kept saying, my head, my head. That Palestinian sun's hot with the direct rays of it. My head, my head. And the father was busy, so the boy was sick. He said to the servant, take the child to its mother. And the boy got sicker and sicker until finally on his mother's lap he died. And the gallantry of that famous woman who showed favor to a servant of Christ, she knowed exactly and was led by the Spirit what to do. Oh, I like that. Not only Barney Mayus, but I like that. She took him over to the prophet's chamber and laid him on the prophet's bed. What a place to lay him, just right. And she said to her servant, Saddle me a mule, and don't you stop until I bid you go forward. And her husband said, There's no need of going after him. This is neither new moon or Sabbath. He's not up there. She said, All is well. 
And another thing Barney made us. Do you know God don't reveal everything to His servants? He just reveals to them what He wants them to know. Just what He wants them to know. So when the woman come in sight of this great mighty man of God, he walked to his cave door and set his staff upside the wall, and getting rather aged, and he put his hands up like this, and he looked out and he said, Who is that I see coming? Gehazi said, It's the Shunammite. She looks like she's full of grief. She was crying and going on. So he said, Her heart is grieved, but God's hid it from me. I don't know what's the matter with her. He said, Go meet her. And he went and met her, and uh, once she come close to this great prophet, he said, Is all well with thee? Is all well with thy husband? Is all well with thy son? Oh, I love that woman's expression. She said, All is well. I think that's where Martha and Mary. Martha is always kind of dilatory, it seemed like. But when she know that if, referring back to this woman, if this Shunammite woman know that God was in that prophet, that was God's representative of that day, and if God was in his prophet, how much more was he in his son? And she said, Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. That's it. That's the idea. I'm a Shunammite woman. She said, all is well. Why? Her husband wringing his hands and screaming. All her relatives screaming and wailing and going on. And here she was with a broken heart. The baby laying on the prophet's bed, dead. Her only son and an old woman. An old man. How she loved that little fellow, but all is well. For she was standing before God's representative. And he knew, she knew that God could reveal to that representative of his. Whatever it was, God gave and God taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But she wanted to know why God took it. I like that. And God has a representative in the world today. We call it the Holy Spirit. Stand in His presence. Oh, God, I wish people could get that. Stand in His presence and find out what He says. And she said, all is well. I suppose the heart of the prophet become cheered up. So she came and fell down and grabbed him around the legs. That was kind of misbehavior. The servant thought, this woman shouldn't fall around his master like that. So what did he do but jerk her up? And so Elijah said, let her alone. Her heart's full of grief and God's hid it from me. And then she revealed what had happened. So why did God give me this son? Why did you tell me that to deceive me? Now the boy's laying dead. Watch Elijah. He said he knew that everything he touched was blessed when he was anointed. He said to Gehazi, take this staff and you go forward. And if any man salutes it, don't you salute him. Don't stop for any social affairs. I think that's what God does with his word. It's anointed. It's him. And we're his messengers. We ain't got time to stop to do this and argue this and fuss this. The message is urgent. People are dying. Let's get there. Stop our denominational barriers and all everything else. Let's break through. Yes, sir. Get the message to a dying world. Then, don't want to get on that and start preaching. Now, however, he started on. But the woman's faith wasn't in the staff. Her faith was in the prophet. And she said, as the Lord God liveth. Your soul never dies. She knows he was alive forevermore. Your soul never dies. I'll not leave you. Oh, I, that's it. Now you got it. Hold on. Take a hold of the Holy Spirit like that and don't turn it loose. My arm's any better today? 
it don't make any difference tomorrow, don't make any difference whenever it is, I'll hold to it, does come right. Yeah. Yeah. I've got your promise. You give your promise. I know of others who is healed by it, and I'll hold right here. I'm on your hands. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Something's going to happen then. Yeah. When you take God's promise and hold it, Lord, you told me that if I would meet the qualifications of repentance and so forth, that you'd give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm right here on your hands till you do it. Amen. I like kind of Buddy Robinson's testimony there. Guy in the middle of the cornfield said, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost, said, when you come back to earth, there'll be a pile of bones laying right here. Not like that. Yes, sir. That's when he got something. That's the way you want to do it. Hold on to it. I admire that woman. Her faith was in the prophet. She held him. She said, I'm not going to leave you. So, well, it's just... Now, Jesus taught that same thing. How about the unjust judge and the widow? You want revenge. Although she cried day and night, well, he, he, he revenged her enemies. Just get rid of her. He said, how much more will your heavenly Father give them the Holy Ghost who asked him? That's what we want. If you don't believe the Holy Spirit's real, take a hold of God's promise and just stay with it. Hold on to it. Don't leave it. If you don't believe it's a healer, whatever disease or trouble you have right now, don't wait for the healing line. Just take a hold of it right now and say, God, I'm on your hands. And Satan will say, you're no better. That's what he told me. I said, look here, old slewfoot. If you don't, if you want, you like to hear me testify about the glory of God, stick around. <laughs> but you ain't going to shake me away from that. <laughs> If you like to hear the testimonies of God and the praises of divine healing, stand around. I'm going to ring it out as long as I can. Just stay right with it. Stick around and listen at it. I invite you to listen at it. Stay around. First day no better, next day no better, next day no better. I just kept staying, testifying, praising God, pressing through the dark clouds. He made a promise. Finally, there it was. He got tired of and run away. <laughs> then we find then that the prophet... See, he couldn't get it off his hands. So he said, all right, I'll gird up my loins and here I'll go with you. Oh, my. So Gehazi met him coming back. Her faith, now the, the stick would have done the job. But it's where your faith is. So her faith wasn't in that, it was in the prophet. So here he comes up there and all of them bewailing and the carrying on and screaming and all hope's gone and everything I can imagine saying, shh, 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 keep still. <laughs> What's he going to do? I want you to notice. He went in the room where the baby was laying on the bed, shut the door behind him, just he and the baby. That's where the most successful times when you get alone with God. See? Get alone with God. Jesus said, enter into a closet and close the door. Pray to your Father what seeth in secret. He'll open you, oh, uh, He will reveal it to you openly. So I can see the prophet. Now the Bible said, he walked to and fro in the room. Yes. Just walking. Lord, here I am. What can I do? Walk to and fro. He's waiting on the Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's what struck him. Goes over and lays his ba- body over the baby's body. Begin to get warm. Got up and started walking again. Walking back and forth. He felt the anointing coming greater. So he laid his body on the baby and he sneezed seven times. Picked it up. Brought it out, presented it to its mother. Oh, how little Barney Mayus liked that story. He'd say, See, God has to work up his purpose, Barney Mayus. See? God has to do something. Uh, bring up somebody for a certain thing. He ordains things. Oh, Mommy, you're so pretty. I just love you, Mommy. And you know, Barney Mayus, before you were born, you don't understand it now, honey, but before you were born, I've dedicated you to God. To Jehovah. You know, I, it wouldn't surprise me a bit, but watch your little eyes. We'll see the Messiah. Hallelujah. They thought, oh, Elias, if he'd ever come now, I'm blind. But you know, Barney Mayus, God uses little boys for his glory. He's got a purpose, and I believe he's got a purpose in life for you. That is, he thought that, oh, it couldn't be now. Look what it was. Poor mother. She prayed. She's gone on years ago. But I guess what she prayed for was lost. You know, on them 
cobblestones. No, no, there's never a sincere prayer ever made but what it's answered. I'm 51 years old, and I've been in the ministry 31 years. And I'll say before God's Bible, I never did sincerely ask for anything but what God gave it to me or told me the reason why he couldn't. I say that as a servant of Christ. That's right. Of the tens of thousands of times that I've asked him for things, sincerely asked him for anything, take single out something and ask him for it, he'd either tell me, he'd give it to me or tell me why he could not. So I know it always is best if I can't have it. Your little baby boy would ask for your straight razor to shave with it, you'd be a poor father to give it to him. Right. You'd hurt yourself. He knows what's good for us and what's not. So, then Barney Mayus would think this. You know what? Just a little bit below here is the ford where Israel crossed over. And just think, right down this same road where that priest come a while ago, that great prophet Elijah with Elisha come arm in arm down that road, walking down to the Jordan, and opened her up again. Then from the time that Israel crossed into the great prophet Elijah, God still could open the sea. He could open the waters. He thought, oh, if I'd only lived in that day, them two great prophets arm in arm walking down to the Jordan. One of them was coming back, the other was going up. And the old one had fought Jezebel and Ahab and sins of the world and just across the river was a horse is tied over there to some bush and a chariot of fire was going to take him up to glory. The young prophet is going to receive a double potion for his ministry to come back. Amen. Walking arm in arm. He said, if I'd been sitting on this rock then, I'd run out and... Because you're a man who brings God real to the people. Just ask Jehovah and I'll receive my sign. But the priest tells me that all those men, Jehovah, quit doing that years ago. They still think the same thing. But he goes on just the same. Still Jehovah. I imagine he thought if I could have ever got out there and have stopped, why, it, them prophets, they sure would have uh, blessed me. And I would have had a, a, a healing. But it's all over now. Days of miracles has passed, so there's nothing that I can do about it, I guess, but just sit here blind. The winds blew, and he shut his, covered himself up into his coat, and he began to think about another story. The great Joshua one day, not over a hundred or two yards from where he was sitting, Israel crossed that mighty river. By that great Prince Joshua. Then he remembered another story. That while they were encamped out there, Israel, God's great pillar of fire hanging over them. One day Joshua, the great uh, captain, walked out to view his, get his strategy on how to take those walls out of the way of Jericho. While he was walking around, he seen someone walking out to meet him. With another warrior. Joshua pulled his sword because he was a fighter. He swung his sword up and he said, Are you for us? Or are you for our enemy? Then that great fellow pulled his sword and the lightning flew off the end of it. He said, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. I'm the Lord's captain. The great mighty Joshua throwed down his shield, throwed down his sword, took off his helmet, and fell at his feet. Oh, he might have said, if I would have lived in them days, I would have liked to fell before his feet too. But little did he know that that same captain of the host of the Lord, not a hundred yards from him, same captain, 
Why well, was thinking all those things? It's usually when you think about the Lord. It's usually when you got your mind not on something else, the things of the world, or how you go make a lot of money, or what kind of a big organization you're going to build. That's what's the matter with the world today. We got our mind on the things of the world instead of on God. Let's think about God. The Bible says there be any praise, there be any virtue. Think on these things. Our mind strolls off. First thing you know, we're straight out in there somewhere. We're thinking about something else. Let's keep Jesus on my heart, in my mind, all day long, day and night. That's the way. While I was thinking about that, he heard a noise. It's strange. Wherever Jesus is, there's a lot of noise. I don't know why, but it usually is. And a lot of noise come from on the inside. First thing, the gate burst open, and here's a great noise, and people running, and some hollering, Hosanna! Hosanna! Yes. To the prophet of Galilee! The women and some of the men. Then you hear some hollering and making fun of him. You're nothing but a fake! Overripe eggs and fruit throwed at him. You heard that same priest a while before, before they had the association to meet together. Said, and you say you're a prophet! We heard that you raised the dead man out of the grave. We know you, faker. They laid that man there and your disciples did that. That's nothing but a faith. If you can raise the dead, we got a whole graveyard full of them up here. Come raise some of them and we'll believe you. Jesus don't mind the devil. He never did. That same old devil said to him one time, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be turned to bread. He could have done it. One of them put a rag around his face one day, down there in the courts, put it around his face, his eyes, and hit him on the head with a stick, the mockers, and said, If you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. See that old devil? The same old devil lives today. Go down here and heal old man so-and-so on the corner. Go over here to so-and-so and heal them. We don't take orders from the devil. Jesus said, I can do nothing till the Father shows me first what to do. And he's the same yesterday, day, and forever. So when you hear anybody saying like that, just walk away. It's the devil. That's right. We don't take orders from Satan. We just come from above. When he shows us what to do, then we go do it. If he wants Mr. Jones on the corner, he'll he'll tell his servant and he'll go over and heal him. Right. Just by his orders. I do nothing till the Father shows me first what to do. St. John 5 19. Now, I can hear that priest call out to him, You're nothing but a fake. Jesus, the burdens and sins of the world on him. He was going straight to Calvary, right up to Jerusalem, to be offered up into the hands of sinful man, the Gentiles. There's the crucifying. All the burdens and sin of every sin that was ever committed on the earth or ever would be committed rested up on him. And they were laughing, making fun of him. Others hollered, Hosanna to the prophet of Galilee. The son of David. That's the way it is today. Right in Beaumont, Texas. Some of them will laugh and make fun. Some believes the story. It's always been that way and it always will be that way until the consummation. It'll be that way. A mixed multitude. Every revival produces twins. The two sons of Jacob or Isaac is well represented. Every time there's a revival, there's an Esau born and a Jacob born. One religious man of the world gets starchy and takes some seminary experience, and the other wants that birthright regardless of how he has to get it. If he has to be a holy roller or anything else, he wants a birthright. I don't care. That's what's the matter with the people today. They're afraid of that birthright. Oh, how that they hate that. But it produces twins. The man of the world, very religious, inclined, do good alms and things, but cares nothing about the birthright. Those two great factions have been fighting since the world began. And they're about ready to come to a head right now. Where something that Jesus said to be so close to like to deceive the very elected if it was possible. It's true, you see what a deceiving hour that we're living in. 
Stay with the Word, brother. Don't leave that Word. That's right. The Word will speak for itself. Then, I can imagine poor old Barney Mayus trying to raise up, saying, uh, uh, what's it all about? Sit down. Uh, what's the noise about? Who's done something? Nobody would help him. He was blind. I hate to see that. Just push a poor old blind man around. Then the first thing you know, there must have been a, I'm going to think, a young lady came by. And the old fellow had been pushed back and he was trying to get up on his knees, his old rags. She helped him up nicely and tenderly. She said, Sir, I perceive that you're blind. Yes, madam. You're so kind to the blind. Yes, I have a feeling for the blind or for anyone in need. Madam, would you tell me, nobody will tell me, what is the noise about? I have been here for many years. I've never heard such a, a noise. Everyone saying one thing and one another. Oh, sir, have you never learned that Jesus of Nazareth, Glory. the prophet, is passing by? Who? Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Well, who's Jesus of Nazareth? You are a Jew, aren't you? Oh, yes. Well, did you ever know in the scriptures that that the Lord our God was going to raise up a prophet like unto Moses and he will be the Messiah? Oh, yes. I was just thinking about that. I was just thinking about it. Oh, yes. He'll be the son of David. Well, that's who's passing by. What's his name? Jesus of Nazareth. He's the Messiah. I see him give sight to the blind. Oh, you should have seen him this morning. He certainly proved his messiahship when he come into the south side of the city. You should have seen him. Do you remember a little fellow in the city here by the name of Zacchaeus? Oh, yes, Rebecca's husband. Yes, he's given me alms many times. He's a merchant. Mm-hmm. Well, he was kind of small in stature, you know, and Rebecca's been attending the meeting, and I am a disciple of this Lord Jesus. And we're taught as Christians, his disciples, to honor and be kind and true. That's all Christians do that. Show courtesy. And uh, that's why I want you to understand, sir. And this morning I was present, for we knew he was coming. And Rebecca had prayed so long that Zach, yes, he's a good man, but he's kind of self-styled because he leaned so hard to the synagogue. And you know Rabbi Kavinsky over there, he, he just simply doesn't like Jesus of Nazareth. And they had a ministerial association here, and they met this morning and stopped Jesus from doing miracles in the city. Drove him out, so he just walked out. But you know, Rebecca had prayed so hard that Zacchaeus would become to believe the Lord Jesus as being God's Messiah. And she told all the things that... Messiah done and how he'd be a revealer of the secrets of the heart and so forth. And you know what Zach has done? He was kind of short in statue, so he's down at the gate pretty early where we know it was to be. And you know, when he's seen he's going to be too little to see him, so I'm sure Rebecca and I had made a covenant with one another. We going to pray that if the Messiah would be, rec- he'd be rec- recognized as a Messiah. So I watched Zach. Is. He ran way down... Um, Hallelujah Street until it come to Glory Road. And you know that sycamore trees that stands there? In other words, there was palms. Said he climbed up in there and he said, Now nah, I'll get me a place to sit down right here on a forked limb. I'll sit down, put one leg over this way and one over this way. I'll get a look at him when he turns the corner because he always follows Hallelujah Avenue and Glory Road. He always stays right on them, so I know. I mean, so he sat down where two limbs met. Now that's where a lot of people sit tonight. Where your way and God's way comes together. There's got to be a decision made. You may be here tonight in that same condition. Well, he got to thinking up there. He told us a while ago after what happened, it did. <clears throat> so the ministerial association wouldn't let him go to the auditorium to have the meeting. So they was going to have So Zacchaeus, he got up in the tree and he said, Rebecca told me that this man could discern the thoughts of the heart. Now, I don't believe in Rabbi Kabinsky. My pastor told me that that thing never happened no more. If there is a Rabbi Kabinsky here, you forgive me. I'm just using this for, um, see, 
Or, uh, or I could say the state presbyter or something like that, a district superintendent, or, you know, just anything will do like that. You know where I'm getting to. So then, anyhow, he gets up in the tree, and he, um, a doctor, Ph.D., L.L.D., or any of them, you know. So he gets up in the tree, and he said, you know what? I'm going to be sure that that guy don't know nothing about me. So he got all the leaves and pulled them all around him and camouflaged himself. Yeah. This little bitty guy, anyhow, sitting up on this lane and all that good So he left one little leaf there, that he, like a door he could look up and see him when he turned uh, Hallelujah Avenue going up Glory Road. Of course, right close there on Corinth. And after a while, while he's sitting there, she said, You ought to hear him testify of it, sir. Jesus is going on by. And the old blind man was listening to this story. Because he knew what mother told him that Messiah would be. So he's listening to this story. Jesus is going all this throwing stuff at him and making fun of him and telling him, come raise the dead. Uh, they see there was no hoax in it and so forth like that. And, and uh, so as they um, said, and he told us then that he hid under these leaves and he left this little door open. Then when, when you know what? Say when he come by, I just peep over and get a look at him. Said because of... Everybody else looking at him. Well, for Preston's sake, so I'll just look at him. So he hid so he wouldn't see him. So he raised up the lid, and after a while, here comes Jesus along, and a woman coming out, and a great big apostle in front, Simon Peter with eleven others, saying, I'm sorry, the prophet is very tired. We have to take him on now. He, he's kind of uh, didn't get to have the meeting down there, so uh, we have to go back out of the city. And said, he watched him in a few minutes and he come right over, raised up a little, little bit more and looked. He said, you know, I kind of like the looks of that fella. It's something though you can never look at Jesus right straight and never feel the same anymore. Amen. Something about it will get a hold of it. So he took his little leaf like this and raised it up and said, I sure fooled him this time. I got up in the tree. And that's the guy that knows the secrets of the heart. <laughs> well, he, he might be a prophet for all I know. And he gets over like this. He stopped right out of the tree. He looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come on down. Not only did he know he was in the tree, he knew his name. Oh, Barney Mayer said, that's him. That's the son of David. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There he goes, a crowd of thousands, maybe seven or eight thousand people screaming one thing or another. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. I believe that you are the prophet that was to come. Oh, thou son of David. Now he could not touch him. I could preach on that right easy. Faith in God will do. Who has to be a bishop, district presbyter, Dr. L.L.D. Jones? No, sir, a beggar. Ragged. Blind. But had faith enough. Look at the burden on him. Well, all that facing him. No doubt but all his clothes was a stink of rotten fruits and things that vegetables they'd throw at him. But he had kept his head. He was facing Calvary. All the whole world was laying on his shoulders. But the faith of a blind beggar stopped him and made him stood still. Amen. The same mighty host of the Lord that stopped the sun for Joshua. Joshua stopped the S-U-N by faith. But blind body may have stopped the S-O-N by faith. And that same faith will bring him from glory where he controls the solar system in the universe or bring him down into this tabernacle tonight. That same childlike faith. He stopped and stood still. Looked around. They brought him over. He said, your faith has healed you. <laughs> oh, my. There he went walking on. The little lady holding him by the arm. She must have said, did you hear what he said? Oh, yes. Oh, think 
He told me I'd get my sight. The procession was moving on down the road. He was heading on up the mountain to go to be crucified. He said, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. That's the same as your faith saves you from hell. Same Greek word to sozo. Yes, same time. Every time it's translated, physically saved or spiritually saved, same faith does the same thing. Thy faith has saved thee. Oh, his faith stopped Jesus and had him to stand still. So he said, he told me he is the Messiah. He had, he's got all the signs of Messiah. And he told me I'd receive my sight. I'm satisfied I will receive it. Oh, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. He starts saying, directly he's seen a shadow. <laughs> Oh, I have received my sight. And down the road he went. When he says anything, just keep believing him. I read a little story, maybe fiction, maybe not, I don't know. On Barnabas, it said he had a, a wife and a little girl. It said that one night his wife got sick, so he, he went out and he said, Jehovah... The only thing I have to offer you, they had to have some kind of entertainment to attract the attention the beggars did, like they do in India. If a beggar in India hasn't got something to attract the attention of the, of the passerby, he'll never get a coin. Seldom will, anyhow. They got little monkeys. The little monkey will beat the guy, and he'll run like he's screaming and crying. They got a cobra, a snake, that uh, fight a, a little animal, and, they, and everything to entertain for something other to make them we give a coin. So they said that Barney Mayus had two little turtle doves and they'd do tumbles over one another. He said, Jehovah, I haven't got much. But if you just let my wife live, the physician just left and said, she's going to die. I need her so bad. If you'll just let her live tomorrow morning, I'll give you my two turtle doves for a sacrifice. And his wife got well. So he offered the turtle dove. Some weeks later, he said he had a little girl he had never seen in his life, a little curly-headed girl. One night she got real violently sick, and the good physician come again. He said, Barnabas, the child is almost in hysterics. I think the child is going to die. Oh, he said, good physician, are you sure? As far as my medical training will let me know, the child is dying now. The fever has run it into a spasm, and there's nothing that can be done for it. And he made his way out the side of the house in the moonlight, feeling along the side. He said, Jehovah, I haven't got but one thing left. I don't know what kind of dog they call that today that leads the blind. I forget. C&I dog. C &I dog. Well, instead of a, a dog leading the blind in that day, they had a lamb that would lead the blind. So Barney Mayes, they said, had a, a lamb that led him. He said, that's all i got to give, Jehovah. But I love my little girl so good. If you'll just let her get well and not die, tomorrow I'll go to the, the temple and I'll, I'll give you that lamb for a sacrifice. The little girl got well. The next morning he was on his road taking the, the lamb up to the sacrifice. And said the priest come out and said, Where goest thou, Barney Bayes? He said, Oh, priest, servant of God. I go up to the temple to give my lamb for a sacrifice. He told him the story of his little girl being sick and said, I offered Jehovah, when he healed my wife, I offered the doves. Then when my little girl got well, I told him I'd give him the lamb. He said, oh, Bartimaeus, you can't offer that lamb. Here, I'll give you money. And you buy your lamb from the changers out there, the pins. You buy a lamb. I'll give you the money to buy it. He said, Oh, priest, that's awful kind of you, but I never offered Jehovah a lamb. I offered him this lamb. There you are, brother. I'm sure you get the spiritual application there. I never offered him a lamb. I offered him this lamb. Why, well, he said, Barney Mass, you cannot offer that lamb. That lamb is your eyes. He said, Oh, priest, if I'll be true to my promise to Jehovah, Jehovah will provide a lamb 
for Barnabas' eyes. That's what he had done. He provided a lamb. On this cool spring morning, Jehovah had provided a lamb for blind Barnabas' eyes. Let me say this to my waiting congregation tonight. That same lamb is provided for you tonight. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. And our faith tonight can bring that same Lamb of God right down in our midst to perform the same miracles and signs that he did before Jericho and the rest of them. Do you believe that? Let us pray. O Lamb of God, that take away the sins of the world, I come to thee now with all my heart for these sick people. They wait patiently, many of them stand in their limbs are aching. But thou art God. You will reward them. They have laying here handkerchiefs and little parcels of goods. I lay my body over them in the name of the Lord Jesus, asking that you'll send your power and blessings with them. Healing every sick person that these represented, to that little fevered baby waiting for this one, to that poor old blind daddy sitting there tonight in that little house with that white cane beating against the door. Oh, Jehovah, go out through the midst yonder, Lord, and heal them. Our God, there's many yonder in, that, in the hospital waiting, a sick person dying. All hopes is gone. Thou art still Jehovah God. They cannot come to the meeting, but thou can go to where they are, Father. I pray that you'll grant it so. I pray that your mercies rest upon the peoples now. Grant the healing of every sick person that's here, the salvation to every soul that's lost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to every believer, that this meeting might close in a great climax with the Lamb of God leading them into paths of righteousness to the great healing fountains of God's mercy, to the great salvation pools of His Holy Spirit. Grant it, Lord. I commit them to Thee now with myself that You might show Yourself that our faith tonight as a blind beggar that we have just talked about can bring the presence of the Lamb of God in our midst to show the same signs that He did when He was here. And all the people will believe you, Father. I, I trust with all my heart as I commit ourselves to thee, waiting on your spirit to confirm the word that's been preached with signs following. Amen. I love him. Worship him now. I Shake hands with the pilgrim around you somewhere.
wonderful Jesus is to be, the counselor, prince of peace, my God is he, a saving me, keeping me from Jesus gives liberty and a full salvation, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Oh, wonderful, my Redeemer, pray. Oh, let's just raise our hands when we're saying, oh, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Don't you love singing? After the message, you just feel like the Word of God is, just scours you out. And then, I love good old Pentecostal singing. I do despise an overtrained voice. That's not singing. Holding your breath till you're blue in the face and you're just putting on them. I just like good old-fashioned singing at all. I like wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. You know, there's been one song I always wanted to sing that was nothing between my soul and the Savior. And I never could sing. I couldn't sing at all. But one of these days when you all get over to your big palace in heaven, I'm going to give you a little insight of something. And all down, way down there when you're standing in your big palace door, walk out some morning, way down there and around where the river makes its turn after it comes out of the throne of glory, you know, there's a little bit of wood sitting over there, and there's a little log cabin. That's mine. And then, and when you get down there, some morning walk out on your porch, you listen, stand down there on that old porch. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. You know what I want you to say? Praise God. Old Brother Branham made it. There he is, right down there now. Yes, oh, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, We'll have no less days to sing His praise than when we first begun. Let's sing it, everybody. Amen.
I love that, don't you? Or I'm going to sit over on the side of the hill where there's a little bush that's over on this side of the tree from the fountains of life. And I hear the great all your all's great voices, the angels blending in with you over there singing on the other side of the river. I want to sit and listen for 10,000 years. Oh, how I love him. Isn't he wonderful? Certainly is. Now, you feel real good? Now, that's what I call old-fashioned singing. Singing in the Spirit. I'd rather have that than all these little chopped-up songs you sing. I think them inspired writers, when they wrote them songs, like Eddie Pruitt wrote the inauguration song when he picked up his pen, everybody was put by his poetry and things, and one day the Spirit fell on him. He grabbed the pen, wrote the inauguration song, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. I know and wrote when I survey the wondrous cross where on the Prince of Glory died, all my fame is but lost. Another wrote, Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. Some days coming, oh glorious day. I think of blind Fanny Cross, he said, What does Jesus mean to you? Hard calling, do not pass me by. Thou the stream of all my comfort. More than life to me. Who have I on earth beside me? How wonderful he is. Now that great wonderful Christ, the one we sang, the old hymns of the faith, our forefathers, back in the days of Spurgeon, John Wesley, and Charles Wesley, Brother Moore and I stood at the grave not long ago. I just cried. I thought, oh God, when I stood at William Capper's grave there, when he, uh, they thought he was the neurotic. Any man is spiritually is considered crazy. We know that. Anyone. So he got in the spirit and wrote that famous song, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. When sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all of his guilty stain. You know what happened? Immediately after the Spirit left him, he tried to commit suicide, drowning in the river. Yes, the Spirit had left him. He didn't know where he was at, Harley. That great man misunderstood. I stood there and I thought, when Charles Wesley was down on the river that day or the lakeside, in his little cabin, a storm come up. He's trying to make his way back. A little sparrow flew in his bosom and he held it till the storm was over. Went out and held it on his finger. His inspiration come. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. While the near water flow, while the tempest still is high, hide me o'er my Savior, hide till the storms of life is past. Saved into thy bosom, blind. Oh, my great man, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime with partings leave behind us, footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, while sailing over life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother in seeing shall take heart again. I like that. Tell me not in mournful numbers that life is just an empty dream. The soul is dead, the slumbers and things are not what they seem. Yea, life is real and life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal, for dust the heart to dust returns, was not spoken of the soul. Oh, I like that. Let us be up and doing with a heart for any strife. Be not like dumb, driven cattle. Don't be drove into it and be a hero in the strife. Oh, my. Them poets and things certainly thrill my soul when I read of those godly men that wrote them like the psalm of life there, Longfellow, and how that I think that God penned them things. That man of old, as it said in the Bible, moved by the Holy Spirit, wrote those old blood songs. I see a crimson stream of blood. All those famous old songs of the church, it's a lot better than some of this little old chopped up stuff we have today, brother. Amen. I tell you, dear. I love that old time religion. Love all those good old songs of the faith. All right, while the Holy Spirit is here, we'll call the prayer line and pray for the sick. Everybody, get your faith out and in your heart. You don't have to say it in your mouth. You remember, your, your thoughts are louder in heaven than your voice is on earth. <laughs> say this. O oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. See if he'll do the same thing he did. Zacchaeus, just pull out your fig leaf one time and look down. See if he isn't still the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> See if he doesn't do the same thing. He'll pull you out. Speak to you in a good thing. He'll go home with you tonight. <laughs> 
have a talk with him before you go to bed, you and your wife. Home will be changed. It won't be like it used to be then when he goes home with you. Billy, where are you at? Gene, Leo, who give out the prayer cards? You? Oh, oh Billy? Billy, where's Billy at? What? D, one to hundred? Prayer card D's just give out today. Now, so that we won't be able to get mixed up. Uh, have we got enough room there? I guess we could stand a few there if our brother. Who has D number one? All right, lady, go right over here. I answer your call. Number two will take place beautifully. There was a, a man and his wife. First time he's ever one of them meet. They were sitting in the audience. A lady come in and sat down by the side of him, and the little lady resented it. The lady was sitting close because she was in her way. Made her move back. After a while, the little lady made her move back. She re- this woman that had to move back, she resented the woman resenting her. So she got to praying. She said, Lord, I oughtn't to have done that. Forgive me, I didn't mean it. And then the lady that was in front that had resented her said, Sister, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And the two, the husband and wife, were sick. No, just a little bit after it's done, I seen the angel of the Lord standing over them. Called them by name and healed them both and sent them back to their home. <laughs> Lake Charles will know about it. Take the back seat. Prefer one another. Twenty-one, two, three, four, five. All right, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. If you'd come down, told him what he'd done through the day and what he'd been doing and what he wanted and all that. He said he don't need me standing anymore. <laughs> oh, I'll never forsake him. I'll never forsake him.
get in the spirit. scripture somewhere to prove that you them same Messiah signs everywhere in the scripture just full of it Lord maybe they never read it before read right over it so did the Pharisees and Sadducees of their days the teachers read right over it that he was to be that no doubt the very day that he was crucified they might have sang in the temple that morning Psalms 22 my God my God why have thou forsaken oh God open spiritual eyes give understanding we commit ourselves to thee in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> now, just a moment. I see a great line of people. There's no way for me to have... Is there anybody here that's never been in one of the meetings when discernment is seen? And, and just like I do. He eats like I do. He sleeps like I do. He's a, he's a person that Jesus died for. Now, I condemn the doctrine of the Catholic Church. That's right. But not the Catholic man. Certainly. And if I ever get to a place I can't reach my arm out just as far for a Catholic as I do for a Pentecost, then I ought to go back to Calvary again. There's something wrong with me. Jesus came to reach out for anybody. And for oneness, twoness, threeness, fiveness, whatever it might be, there's no difference. I want to reach an arm. When I first come into this as a Baptist minister, why, one group said, come join our group. The other said, come join our group. I said, brother, I love you both. You'll have to come to one. We just won't permit it. I said, oh, but God will permit it. See, I'll stand right between you with the arm out to both sides and saying, we are brethren. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Amen. That's right. Get love in your heart and be true and honest and have the right kind of a motive and the right kind of objective and God will take care of the rest. If your motive is right and your objective is right. If your objective is right and your motive is wrong, it won't work. But when you get your, if you know it's the will of God, then your motive right and your objective right. Like now, here's a group of people. I've been talking about him being Messiah. If you can still touch. I'm not talking about because I think so. I'm talking about because the Bible said so. Now, the reason you say, Brother Bram, aren't you afraid of, no, sir. 
Now, if I wanted to say, look here, I can do this. See what a big guy I am? <laughs> I better shut up and walk away from the platform right there because it'll never work. Right. See, what's my motive? To melt these people together as God's people. Yeah. Say, I tell you, all you people, I belong to the Baptists. Y'all come over to join the Baptists. I'm a oneness. I'm a trinitarian. I'm a threeness or twoness or whatever you have. I don't know. All of, I belong to that. No, sir. I'm your brother. I belong to Christ. We belong to one another. Amen. So that makes my motive, my objective right, my motives right. So therefore he said, say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt. And it's the will of God for me to do it, or he never sent me. There you are. If you get everything working right, and your motive and objective right, you can say to anything, as long as it's the will of God, it'll do it. But if I want to say to be some big stuffed shirt to make me a great program somewhere and put me on some telecast universal or something, now that's wrong. I don't. Jesus liked one thing. You know what it was? Showmanship. He wasn't a showman. <laughs> no, no, no. They said, "Why are you pulling this bunch of holy rollers down here, fishermen and so forth?" His brother said, "Come on up to the high priest. Come on up and show yourself what you can do if you're the so and so." He said, "Your time's always. Mine hasn't come yet." That's right. He didn't go up with it, even with him. He doesn't today. He isn't a showman. He's the son of God. Amen. And you believe that. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Jesus, the son of God. Now, I can't have discernment in this line. See. But we're going to pray. Before I do it, I want to be sure, if I can, the Holy Spirit will help me to know that the power of God is here so you can see the anointing. Now look, all this audience, let's just make this a show. This audience out here, every one of stranger to me. There's only one person, these two little girls that here, that's my buddy's girls, that little um, Evans girl. Brother Evans, where are you at? I haven't seen you. Tell you something on Brother Evans while we're waiting. I'm waiting for something. We was fishing not long ago. How come to get acquainted with this fine man and his wife? Brother Mercer introduced me to him. In the morning before I left the hotel, wasn't that in Philadelphia? With Thea Jones at the mat. And Brother Mercer said, he's a fine man by the name of Welsh Evans. He wants to meet you. My wife was with me. I got up that morning, and my little boy Joseph, you all know about little Joseph, six years before he come, I saw him in a vision. The doctor said my wife could never have another child. I said, oh, boy. Yeah. So when the next child was born, it was a girl. They said, I oh, you meant Josephine. I said, I meant Joseph. God never tells lies. And uh, so about four years later, she, we know she's going to be mother again. So they said, is this Joseph? I said, I don't know. The doctor said, she can't have it, Brother Brandon. I said, she'll have that one. So when the nurse came down, I was walking the carpet off on the floor, you know, and come down and said, Reverend Brandon? I said, yes, ma'am. said, you have a fine boy, seven pounds and three ounces. And I said, Joseph, you've been a long time getting here. Daddy's glad to see you. And so she said, you called him Joseph. I said, that's his name. And Joseph's are with me there, four years old, been two years ago. No, oh, three years old. And he's five now. And he sees visions. And when he got up that morning, he said, sitting on the side of the bed, he and I sleep together in one another's arms and we we're real buddies. And he said, Daddy, he said, David is going to get hurt on a motorcycle. He's going to skin his leg on that side. I said, you dream that? So no, Daddy, I saw it right there. We just marched it down the book, and when we got home, David, a little boy next door to us, two days after his home, rode down the lane on the motorcycle and skinned his side up. That's exactly what he said. I'm going for it one of these days, friend. We'll leave the world. I pray that God will take the spirit that he's let me have and put a double potion upon my son Joseph to shine the light while I'm gone. And um, so then I expected Billy. Billy's one of the finest boys in the world. He wasn't called in the ministry. Now, I don't want to leave without having somebody to represent, take my place when I'm gone. And I started to move, and I seen Brother Welch Evans. I want to say the Sister Evans. <laughs> Will you forgive me? He'd caught too many fish, and he was hiding from the game board. And I seen him up there in a vision, they had him in a sack. And he hit him two or three times. And I said, I wonder if that's that same man. They tell me he likes to fish down in Florida. So I went over there that morning when I walked in, Brother Mercer back there and I, we walked in together and I said, that's the man. <laughs> that's him. So after he introduced me to him, I said, Mr. Evans, and I talked to him. I said, after we talked a little while, got ready to leave, I said, Brother Evans, 
You love me? He said, sure. I said, you're not long ago. You was fishing in some kind of a bio. You had a sack full of fish. You was trying to hide them from the game warden. He said, oh, my, my. <laughs> I said, this one thing I'm going to ask you. Take me fishing there. He said, all right. So his brother's a sinner. And he got snake bit by a ground rattler. Anybody know what a ground rattler is? He's really rank. And his brother was in the hospital and walked on a hook for a long time, wasn't it, Brother Welsh? On a hook. So Brother Welsh and I went back there, got 11 big fish that day. Oh, my, how fine. And I had a great big bass on, and I just couldn't hold him. And Brother Welsh came up there, had his trouser legs all rolled up. He said, can't you hold him? I said, he's too big. He must weigh 14, 15 pounds. And I had him on there, and he just run over them pads, and I told the little bumblebee out again, here he comes. And I... One hit again, and I, he was a good one, around eight or ten pounds, but I couldn't hold him. And that's while I got him kind of whipped down, started to bring him in. Brother Wells said, I'll get him. And without thinking, he jumped in those tulies and under those pads to grab the fish barefooted, and a ground rattler grabbed him. There went the snake. To the lip. And he jumped out there, just holding his foot like that, like bone freezing in there, and his teeth set together, and tears running down his cheeks. And I looked, blood coming out in two places about that wide apart. Oh, my. Well, I, he's a great big man. How am I going to pack him by two or three miles through them swamps? And I happened to think, and I said, Oh, Brother Evans, oh, my Brother Evans. And something said to me, I'm a very present help in a time of trouble. <laughs> I've never seen it before. I laid my hands over on his foot, and I said, now, Brother Evans, just, just a minute. And I said, Heavenly Father, we're in a state of emergency. And I, I know that your word says that the... That they shall tread on the heads of scorpions and serpents, and nothing shall harm them. This man is a believer. He's your child. And I put my hand over on him. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke that poison family from that snake. And I heard him quit groaning. I cut my hand off. He said, I haven't got a pain. We went on fishing all that day. That night when they come in, they was around there talking. We had those great big black bass about that long hang up. About 11 o'clock, his brother come out there, so he was still limping a little on his foot. He wasn't a believer, he was a thinner boy, fine fellow, very fine man. I'm expecting to lead him to Christ next time I go down, baptize him out there on them pools. And so then when um, we went out there and he runs a bait shop, we was at a place and uh, a little hotel across the street from it at Fort, uh, Fort Pierce. And so... His brother come out there, and I was telling his brother about it, and he's seen that snake bite. He said, now, nah, brother, it's good to be religious, but not crazy. He said, you better get to a doctor right now. He said, you know how that made me lay in a hospital like that? Brother Evans said, I was bit this morning at 11 o'clock. This is at nearly 11 o'clock tonight. If God has taken care of me by his grace this long, he'll take care of me the rest of the way out. Never had a rubber smell of anything. It's amazing grace to our Lord Jesus Christ. I know those little girls, Brother and Sister Evan. And I believe this is Brother Willie sitting here, the artist that draw the pictures of them church world. Was you the wall, that pillar of fire? Was you there, Willie, to see that? Was you there, Brother Evan and Sister Evan? How many is in the building is there at the church that morning to see it? All right. For 15 minutes, it stood right there visible before nearly 400 people. Stand there looking at it. Amen. That's right. He's the Lord Jesus. And that same angel of God is right here now. Amen. Have faith in God. Now for you out there, we can bring that line through in about ten minutes. We can just get the Holy Spirit moving with us. Lord knows I'm testifying just so that you'll see to build your faith. If I'd start telling what I've seen him done, do in these my ministry, that I've seen Jesus Christ do before my eyes, they make volumes of books. Just every day, every hour, you can just ask Brother Moore, these people who go around anywhere, any place, it's just constantly all the time. Home, out there, wherever, the Holy Spirit just showing, bring me off place, take me over here, over here. If you just yield yourself to him. The brother that knows has been in the meetings and knows or been around with me in the meetings and up, up home and everywhere else. Are those things so, brother? Raise up your hands if they're so. Right? Thousands can witness that. Now have faith. And if the Holy Spirit will show us what is two or three is a witness, is that right? Two or three is a witness. Have faith now. Raise up your hands again now so I can see 
There's no prayer cards. If you got a prayer card, get in line. If you're sick and I don't know you, or you got a request on your heart or something, hold your hands up. Stop it. You got one? You? Let you and I talk. You're right close to me. You believe me to be his prophet? You believe me? If I can, by the Holy Spirit, reveal to you what your trouble is, will you accept it as from the Lord? Will the rest of the audience do the same thing? God, it's for your glory. You got trouble with your knees and legs. That's right. Wave your hand. All right. Go home and receive your healing. Jesus Christ, make sure. Anybody else? Believes with all your heart? Wait, here it goes. Here it is. Wait just a minute. That man sitting right there, praying for his mother in a hospital. Heart trouble. You believe should be healed, brother? All right, sir. God bless you. I'm a stranger to the man. I don't know him. That's right. Raise up your hand. That's true, oh, isn't it? You believe now? What what are they touching? Here's a little lady sitting here praying just with all of her heart. Not for herself, for the salvation of her husband. (laughs) But that's right, stand on your feet, lady. All right, if you just believe God. There is back there a hernia. Heart trouble. Oh my, it's just everywhere. You believe now? How many believe with all your heart? I just raise up your hand. I just go to, I can't get into that too deep because I couldn't take the line through. Is he God out there? Is he God up here? Is God in heaven? Is God on earth? Is God everywhere? I'll have to just get a minute, Brother Jack, to get this way and see. <clears throat> Do you believe what you've heard and seen? Do you believe it comes from God? Do the people out there believe the same? Amen. If God will reveal to this woman what's your trouble or whatever it is, I don't know. We're strangers, I suppose, to one another. You're up, she, was, she had a prayer card, did she? All right. The prayer card, the boy just come up and mix these prayer cards up, and you just have to draw one, that's all. You see what he can do out there. Now, is that the very same sign that Jesus showed and proved that he was the Messiah when he was here on earth? you believe that? You do. And do you believe that Jesus is here on earth tonight in the form of spirit called Holy Ghost? And he lives in his church through the blood of his sacrifice. He opened and tore down the veil with the shedding of his blood. And made a way that you and I could come into that Shekinah glory. That he could talk here, take my lips and speak to you as two believers. And walk between us and speak between us. And reveal to me the very things that he did there to prove that he's not dead but alive for everyone. You're not here for healing. You've been healed. That's right. But you're here for your husband. You believe that God can tell me what's his trouble? Or he's got stomach trouble. That's right. You got a son. That's the reason you kill standing your hand up. You want me to tell you what's wrong with his son? He's got trouble with his shoulders. That's exactly right. I see some other boy. It's a nephew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You believe God can tell me his trouble? Yes, All right. The trouble is your nephew. He's got stomach trouble. He's nervous. And here's two things they both need is salvation because they're both sinners. That's not saying of the Lord. Believe now with all your heart. Father God, this darling little girl, all of you pray with me, please, now, for these people. Father, I pray that you will heal the little thing and make her well in the name of the Lord Jesus. God in Christ Jesus. Come to everybody, please. Uh, sister, if I could straighten your hand, I'd do it. I can't, but I can pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal her. May the hand come straight. May she go like Barney Mayus with his eyes. Go off this platform, breathe in you. Jesus' name. Amen. And I bless you. Our Heavenly Father, I take the hand of this woman and pray that you'll heal her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Now, you know I know what's wrong with you. 
But whether I said it or not, would you believe it anyhow? See, if I keep on all complete discernment, you know what it does, it brings me down. But your backwards heel set in the chair. So you oh. And if you'll believe with all your heart, arthritis won't bother you. So Lord, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I lay hands upon my sister and pray that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. Keep praying, keep praying. Your prayers, friend, you're the church of God. Pray for these people. Love this, your mother, father, your husband, wife. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal her and make you well in Jesus' name. While the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on now, you just come believing with all your heart, and God will heal you. You believe that? You believe it? Uh, uh, listen, friends, just if I get you quite listen. No matter where, see, you mustn't think that the Holy Spirit's gone away from here because I don't speak to everyone. I, they've done been taking me out. They've been that. How many realizes that our Lord, when a, a woman touched his garment, he felt virtue go from her? How many, how many knows that a prophet called Daniel seen one vision and was troubled at his head for many days over it? How do you think that I'd know those people all about them and things like that if it wasn't vision? How would I ever be able to know it? Then you see what I mean? The strength. I, I, if I just... I see the people coming, you feel that vibration striking them, and then you just have to you just have to turn your head and lay your hands on them and walk. While the Holy Spirit's here, it'll do the same work. Right. Amen. The Lord will reveal. It is this this calls that one pass by or something? Here. Where's the next one? Is this here? All right. We're strangers one another, aren't we? I don't know you, you don't know me. That's right. You heard me preach before. But to know yet you just probably sat on the audience somewhere. You believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? If I will be able then, by the grace of God, to reveal to you, by the Spirit of God, the things you say, what are you talking about, me, brother? Why are you? I'm catching your spirit. Just exactly like he did the woman at the well. You'll have to take my word for that. But if he declares it to be right, then it's right. I've told the truth. <laughs> and then if I claim that it's not me, that it's him, I've told the truth. There's his word. Declare it. See? It's by his permissive will. That I do that. See? He permits me to do it. Now, you're suffering with nervousness. Real nervous. That's right. And you've had an operation, surgery, on the stomach. That's exactly right. You're not from this city. From a place called Vida or something like that. Tonight. You believe God can tell me who you are? All right, let's beat you and go back home. Be well. Sleep you believe? Now just keep praying, keep in prayer as these people pass by. Just keep praying. Lord Jesus, heal this man, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go on the road and show it from us. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you will heal our sister. This I pray, the prayer of faith from my brother, in the name of Jesus. Believe now with all your heart, don't doubt. Believe with all your heart, you'll be all right. Person, seem to have a nice spirit. You're a Christian. You believe with all your heart God can tell me what's the trouble? You think your husband will get all right? That eye trouble, having an allergy and so forth? Go believe now and you'll get all right. Heal him in Jesus' name. God bless you, sister. Our Heavenly Father, I can remember the time when I went into a den room to pray when an emergency was on. And what a great thing you've done in their home. I pray, Father, now knowing what's wrong, I pray that you'll bless and give the desire of her heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Believe you'll make you well. Say that operation. Make you well, if you believe it. What do you think it is? Well... You thought it was a tumor. It's a growth. You thought it was a, a tumor. You thought it was cancer. You had many things. But what difference does it make as long as he heals? That's right. Is that right? You, what you need is a little lift in faith, isn't it? To make you come up.
Sarah, go on home and be well. <laughs> Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, heal him. May the mercies of God be with this child. Make him well. May the mother see such a difference in him, Lord. Just Jesus, may it be so. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may my sister be healed. Amen. Ask and it's giving courage to have faith and belief. Your blessings is on him. Has been since the breakfast. I pray that you'll let him see it, Lord, and know that these stretch nerves. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't doubt. Our Heavenly Father, to lay hands up on her, in the name of the Lord Jesus, may us, her loved one leading her make Christ do the leading from his fourth door, making her well, restoring her right back again. Come down. You believe? Everybody's believing with all your heart? Just have faith. How do you do? My young, healthy looking, but you can't always go with that. You think the Holy Spirit can tell me your trouble? You do. The audience will be the same thing. If Christ remains Christ, you can. Something strange about you. That's the reason he stopped me. Oh, I appreciate you. Now to heal, I cannot heal, lady. I'm a man. But the life cannot be hid. You're here for somebody else. Dangerously sick. You call it cancer in the bloodstream. The right name is leukemia. In a hospital. Not here, over in Louisiana. That's right. That's good faith for a sinner to have. Will you accept Jesus as your personal Savior now? No. All right, raise up your hand. May your sins be forgiven.